What is up guys? So here we have it, the tutorial for Joe Must Die. I know a lot of people have been asking for it, sorry for the delay, but I did it as quickly as I could. So this is going to be a very detailed commentary and tutorial on this difficulty, which is so incredibly hard, as you will soon find out. So we're going to get straight into things, and off the bat, this is the only guy you're going to have to fight with uh, bare fists, because you cannot access the chest or the crate while you are fighting. So take him out anywhere you can. Don't worry, if you get hit a couple of times, there should be an abundance of grubs and bugs for you to chow down. And by the end of this, I think I had quite a few left over as well. And this allows me to determine what I can use and what I can't use within my next playthroughs. So now there are quite a few strategies for each area. But this guide will show you how to get every item in the difficult areas, like that damn swamp. Sure, that took me a long time. But uh, the, I'm not going to say every single item in the game, because there might be some that I've missed. But I have searched very thoroughly, and they are in different locations. So one quick thing over here, you get the AMG Duel over there. And that is not going to be used on this playthrough, because when you're playing this for the first time, you won't have it. So I'll just be using the normal... AMG right over there making sure I've got my weapons always in the same slots this way you avoid confusion when you're in a rush all right let's get some swings in there and then we're good to go so first there's going to be a crawfish down here and the quick mention is to completely ignore the timers because I'm not going to go for the challenges on this one that will be my second video from now First, I'm going to be doing a guide on the, the only guns you need, which is no weapons playthrough, which is pretty quick and simple with the dual AMGs, AMGs at least. So here we go. Just keep moving backwards and swinging a level 3 punch every time. Again, if they hit you when you're shielded or blocking, you will take some damage, but you would need quite a few hits to actually start bleeding. Now, these guys become actually more dangerous dangerous when they lose their extremities and they tend to launch more at you especially when they're on the ground sure they can be relentless okay so he caught me off guard there but it's all right when i first started this playing this the first time i really thought to myself how the hell is this going to be possible see the other strategy you can do there is just to throw a a throwing knife at the box and explode them all when they walk past but I like to keep every single item I can if it is possible to kill enemies without using any of them in that case using the AMGs instead of using the knife saves me one knife so this is how I'm going to play each level so you want that guy to spawn around this edge on the right hand side and then come stand here until you hear the pitter patter of feet and then step away he will move into that mine that tripwire on his own that takes care of that four-legged fuckstick. Okay, once he's down, you can charge up your AMG again. We'll make sure he's down. And you can smack this guy in the head before he even gets up. Or rises up, should I say. And then charge up again and hit him straight away again before he starts his one knee squirt sounds so bad but you can take him out just behind him behind these boxes now just be careful there is a trip mine just to the left of his head and if he explodes that can also explode and also if you discharge your fist in that area I could also make the the trip explode as well so be careful with that don't hit the the gate from this side so you actually blew it up there but Come to the right hand side over here and then hit it. And there will be a tripwire across your door there. Grab the effigy. Now those ones seem to be pretty much in the same locations, but they will differ from difficulty. Okay, so we're going to head down, grab the cure, or part of the cure. Then we're going to run all the way back and give it to Zoe. And that should be straightforward enough. On to the next section we go. Jesus. I have released a video a couple of days ago on the final boss on Joe Must Die. 
and I managed to get there with a fair amount of supplies with uh, weapons and health packs or health bottles should I say and it did take quite a long time to finish but I think the first jack battle on Joe Must Die is way more difficult because you have way less items to use but that is up to everyone's discretion okay so take this guy out any way you can as you can see they can be dodged if you know what attack is coming and every time you want to stomp them make sure you move around to their heads because you can stomp them on the legs which will only just injure them so try and get the head stomp if you can also once completing this once you will get 50 uh, tapes for saving so I went mad on the saves because why the hell not you will die a lot in this Okay, I'm going to keep this spoiler free, just going to head on out and take her to the boat. Then the next time you'll have control of the character is when you're exiting this little dock area. And once again, we're going to speed things up because there's no need for you to sit through this. And we're going to grab our effigy, which is going to be to the right. Don't mind about the croc. Now you can't head straight to the little hut from here. In this mode you have to stick to the left. Be careful of that croc. But don't worry about the second croc. Because it's just a soft toy. So what I like to do is grab everything you can before going through that door. So when I do save my game, then all that will be saved as well. And I won't have to do that every time I die. So plonk her down. Speed this up as well. Make you and we're gonna probably save our game having a quick look around grab some tapes not that I need to but you certainly will need to I think here I was just making sure it was stacking okay now we're gonna head to the tent area and this is also a stealthy area so no need to charge up really again ignore the timers that will be two videos from now and I'm quite curious as to how the hell that's gonna work because like I said before I didn't even come close okay with this area be very careful your only goal here is to take out the four-legger just watch for him you let him jump at you and make sure there's something between you and him every time because he will kill you in one foul swoop and it's also advised if it's a high thing like those crates but if it's like the other one where there's just one crate, he can definitely still hit you. And I think at this point I thought he was dead. Because uh, I strongly recommend playing this with headphones. You can hear instantly if someone is dead or alive. Especially with those four-legged fucksticks because you'll hear the pitter-patter of those feet or claws. You see there, I did not know he was still alive. Although he could be the second one, which I think he is. Yeah, he is actually the second one. Now, in normal mode, you can take all these guys out stealthily, or well, the first three guys. The one will be sitting right there, and the other one was alerted from beside that gate over there. So the next one will be in this room, and again, you could use the box to alert them all. But I want to use or save the knife like the first time. And then what they want you to do is to kill this next four-legged guy with a spear but he is already dead because when you kill the first guy, stealthily even, he still gets alerted. See, I thought he was going to be there, but he is not. Grab the branch, and we head on to the next area. Speed this up a bit. Okay, grab your throwing knife, and now we're going to get to a reasonably difficult part. And this is when you start dying the first time you play this game because there are just certain things that you don't know such as this little tripwire down here which unfortunately I've tried to get past this without blowing it up and maybe use it against Jack himself but this is not the case there's nothing to pick up in here and just be careful of this neuro pad over there 
What I like to do is rush forward and get one punch in him straight away. And depending on his follow-up attacks, he is brutal. If you're not sure, just block. He double-handed and then he'll go to a launch after this. See, he can be interrupted. I was just a bit too late there. We'll try to use these corners effectively, like over here, but very seldom you'll get a couple of punches off without him hitting you. See, like here, he'll launch, and then normally, if he doesn't hit you, he'll hit one more time after that launch. But, find your time and take your time and find the right time to attack. And this is just trial and error. Once you get to know his moves and his attacks and his stances, it'll be a lot easier. They want you to try it over and over again, and you probably will. So keep in mind what he does and use it against him. Charging up a large string over here. And off we go. Ow! I think a rule of thumb is just to block every time you've hit, unless he's not facing you or something. Because I think one string of that uh, hit, or that combo of his, will definitely kill you, or put you near death at least. Let's eat the creepy crawly. Get him to come to the corner. So those, those attacks are pretty slow, and I was just timing them badly there, because you probably could get a punch off before you swing to the next one. But then you'll have to block anyway. Yeah, those are easy enough. And that one wasn't interrupted, even though I did hit him. Let's give him a couple of jabs. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bitch. Okay, so when he grabs you there, I like to give him one little jab. Just say so steps back. Okay, and we're on to the next section. Like I said before, I like to grab things before I go into the save point. Even the weapons over here. And ignore the timer. We're going to save our game most definitely after grabbing the effigy. Nothing else, nothing else. Nope. Make the bombs. Whenever you can, make the bombs. That is a rule of thumb. Alright, so off to Gator Alley we go, or one of the first Gator Alleys. Now unlike normal mode where one spear will kill a croc, this is not the case. What you want to do is aim for his head or mouth, and even if you get him in the head, there's no guarantee he's going to die. So I try and go for the open mouth. Now once he's alerted to your position, he will turn and face you and open his mouth. Even that was a bit soon, but you can see it was sticking out of his mouth there. That's just practice, and over here we have the tripwire, which we're going to use in a second. And then we're going to head up that path to grab lots of weapons. So you get close enough without getting your face eaten off. And once he is alerted to you, it doesn't matter how far you run from him, he will still pursue you relentlessly. There we go. So you want to move to the right hand side now, so he's going to be in line with the tripwire. And then you can move in underneath it. And then stand on the other side of it again between you and him. And that should be good. Now don't go too far back. Because there is another croc behind you. Okay, now if you're having trouble with these two, what I like to do is run and hit the four-legged again. But hit in for the left-hand side here. Because you're always running that little circle or half-circle. Then you can run over and finish him off. Like I said before, he will kill you so quickly. Now there's another way you can do this. You can run up and hit him. Then you can run all the way back down to the water. And the second you go into the water, they will dissolve back into the ground. And this allowing you to move back onto the sand and attack them while they're busy respawning, so to speak. And you can kill them that way as well. So over here, crawfish and some throwing knives and of course the tape which is going to be good for you guys. And just make sure we haven't missed anything. OK, 
Okay, so here we go. We're going to speed this up. Run to the next alligator over here. Now I tried a couple of strategies with this guy. The first one being obviously throwing the throwing knife at the barrel when he swims past. And it wasn't foolproof. He died sometimes and sometimes didn't. So what I would recommend doing is just tailing him. As you will see here in a second, you can do this without even alerting him. Whereas at first you would think it doesn't seem like there's any way you'll get past. Alright, there we go. I was pretty stoked that I could get past him without using anything. Uh, nothing over there. Now we're going to head back in here, grab our throwing knife, and then save your game, if you so desire, or you, if you have enough tips. This is just the other side of the house that you were in earlier. Okay, up the ladders we go. We're going to speed these ladder climbs up as well. But don't be too hasty over here. We have to get rid of something first. And we're going to speed it up again. The long ass ladder. Okay, what you want to do is move around to the right hand side of the sky. So you can see the other mold coming down the stairs and you can see how far he is from you. So once you ki finish killing him, you know whether to block or to attack. And you want to lead him onto the pressure pad. And be sure to charge this up because it probably won't kill him like this. And like I said before, these guys can be brutal when they have no legs. You grab another cassette tape. And if you're running low on cassette tapes, I would suggest not saving over here because your previous save point was pretty much at the bottom of the ladder. But since I've got 40 odd, I'm going to save anyway. Alrighty, so we're going to use this tripwire again to our advantage after the effigy, but we're not going to use it on this molded over here. Now there's a nice trick with this. If you can alert him before the molded cross paths, then the timing is going to be perfect for you to remain stealthy for the second guy. So as he comes around that corner, throw your knife. He's going to go all the way down to the bottom. And as you can see, the one molded is walking away and has not detected you as of yet. But there's always a chance he could. But not this time. Okay, so down we go. nothing to collect under the stairs like there is on other modes but as you can see here we've got some trip wires which we're going to use what I like to do which probably isn't 100% necessary is to get one charged punch on this four-legged fucker and watch him until he's moving away from you kind of like that but wait until you're completely ready and then we're going to run all the way back to an air vent and I want to show you what happens from there so he's facing us now and if you don't hit him on this charge attack then he will kill you. He will turn around and launch at you so quickly. Okay, so we're going to head over here and get into this vent. Now they can still damage you in this vent, as you will see. And it's probably one of the only three times or four times that I use the spirit blade. If you find yourself in here and they're not attacking you, just move it a little bit forward. There's actually a line on the floor. And once you cross that little line, you'll be able to hear them walking towards you. Especially the four-legged guy, he will definitely hit you if you touch the edge, as you can see there. I didn't see any claws, but he definitely still hit me. And you can take out the spirit blade and heal yourself this way by hacking away at the guy's knees. And all the blood has gone from my screen. We can head back to the AMG. Perfect head height for me right here. And you can see the other guy is dead. Now we've got one more tripwire over there. Which we're going to use in a second. Duck when you get around here because he will see you. And I was just checking to see if there were throwing knives on that door and there aren't. So I want to speed this up. Well, I'm going to skip ahead until he's walking away from me. Here we go. You 
can grab the grub. And I think I went back to check, but there isn't any knives or throwing knives over here. Okay, now when you walk past this doorway, you'll hear someone spawn. What you want to do is run all the way around to utilize this tripwire and get him to walk. You'll hear it now. But he's not dead. And be very careful with these clawed guys. As you can see, they can kill you so very quickly. They'll just do some sort of combo attack. They'll just be attacking you relentlessly. And you won't even be able to block. And even if you do block, they'll still kill you with the damage they cause. Okay, so two throwing knives there. Then we're going to punch open the door. Pick up the cassette tape over here. Now in normal mode, this guy is moving. Not him, the one down here. So I would probably go further down the stairs to get a better angle. But I got lucky. Then he'll come towards you, and I like to come up here. And if that doesn't kill him, then you can just stomp on his head. But he's toast. Then you can stealthily take out this guy. Now they do this on purpose. Someone spawns, and then he goes over that pressure pad and renders him legless. And I don't fuck around with these guys. If they got no legs, they're gonna die. I'm not going to risk taking him out with my fists. Okay, my, my video skipped a little bit there the first time since recording this, so I'll count myself lucky. But you missed nothing. Alright, so around that corner we've got another four-legged, but first of all we're going to come down here. Not to collect all the loot, but just to make the loot accessible. And those are the only shotgun shells I've found in the game. And I think there's only one in there, or maybe two, I'm not sure what it starts with. Whatever you do, don't go down that hole if you're being attacked by monsters or you've alerted them because you will die. His uh, venom spit or whatever it is, his vomit will Charge. definitely kill you from down there. Alright, so you can see him around the corner. The aim here is to get your launch in and then stomp him straight away. Run at him, stomp him, and you should get him on the head. Then what I would do now, looking at this, I would stand by that door. Oh no wait, sorry, that's my bad. You must get him to come around this door because there's a tripwire here. What I was going to say is to use the box, explosive box, which is where I should have gone now, definitely. See, I even missed him. And I get hit for my efforts. So what I would do after that is to run around here and then You'll see here there's a box, explosive box, and he will walk straight towards you this way. So throw your knife at this box, and he'll almost be toast. But I made this a lot more difficult than it should be. There's a grub right there. Now I do mess this up quite badly. But like I say in all my guides, I like to keep my mess ups on. This gives you an idea for your margin of error you can do. And here, just because I missed one punch, this one, he leaned back. He gets me three times when I try and exit here. So normally I just retry, but this time it was getting late and I was still alive. But at this point, I won't heal myself. So if I die, I die. But if I do kill him, then I will heal myself. Okay, he's gone. When you got more than one health item, like a bottle as well as some grubs, it's always good to manually choose the one you want because you never quite know which one it's going to auto use. Okay, so we've got the tripwire there. And I was just being cautious about tripwires in here, but we can head down the, the hole over here and we can find our loot. And this is the point I got to last time when I first completed this lab, this area. And that bloody trip mine got me right there because you can't hit it from this angle. But there we go, effigy, branch, and some ammo for the shotgun, the M21. Right, so we are going to head on to the jack fight. Now if I had to choose, I would say this is probably the second most difficult part of this Joe Must Die, being that you have very little ammo and weapons. 
I just skipped ahead through there and we're climbing up. This and the swamp area is probably the most difficult place. What? Oh, but I've got on. a lovely way to get through those swamps, so stick around. Okay, so we're going to speed this up a bit. This is it. It's always good to activate this wow. machine and then save your game because you'll be restarting quite a lot. And it's a good idea to get everything done and then save. So I decided to have a look in that room down there because I didn't think I'd seen it enough. But here we go. Speed this up as well until he lands. Alright, so strategies for this is rinse and repeat. Just play him over and over again until you know his moves, just like the first battle. But of course there's a couple more moves here than there was the first time. Uh, the most dangerous being when he raises his hands in the air like a bloody orangutan. Not like that one. But it's the uh, grapple headbutt. Now that will, if you have any red around your screen, will most likely kill you in one go. Now, in the uh, instructions on the loading screens, it says that you can interrupt that. But I've had very little success in stopping him from grappling me. So I find the best thing to do now is to actually turn around and run away. Because the second you face your back to him, he can't grapple you. He'll just damage you. Like there. I should have turned around there. This is before I had figured out what I was doing. If you turn around straight away, he'll just hit you. And he can't grapple you. So that's a massive, massive... Uh, hint over there. So this is the only time I use my spirit blade in battle. It has such a very short range. So almost every time you hit him once with it, he will counter. As you can see, and you're lucky not to get hit. But it's good for a couple of hits, and then my health is full again. Okay, here he comes. You can dodge that as well. didn't actually realize he was semi-stunned there. It's unlucky to get hit there. That hurt. As you can see, you still take a fair amount of damage with even while blocking. So I heal once to get out of the extreme red and then use the spirit blade to heal myself a little bit more. The best time to attack him with this, like I said, short range is after he attacks, but sometimes he just won't. He waits for you to attack. There we go. As you can see there, he starts that move. Just be very vigilant about that because that will most definitely be your game ender most of the time, or if not all of it. Okay, now we're going to wait and see what he does. If he doesn't hit you with that launch attack, you will do a second to follow up attack. always risky doing that jab, but sometimes you can do it and it looks cool. Okay, so this is the first time he's down. What I would recommend here is to hit him once with your charged attack and then do this. But sometimes he'll fly across the room with your charged attack and then you can run up and stomp on him. This is when I rip out the first bomb. Charge up your fist for the follow-up. Now you can get two charged attacks in here. I say two version three charged attacks. Okay, now he's gonna get all upset. But it's fine, he's tiring. There he is again. See, there's a perfect example. He would have grappled me there, and I would have had a lot more health loss. But instead, turn around and he just hits you. That's probably the biggest piece of advice I can give in this whole game, really judging how many times he has killed me with that grapple butt. Okay, so we back out with the Spirit Blade, gonna heal ourselves up a bit. Uh, watch what he does now, he's gonna charge. I should just be blocking instantly, but I did not. So when he goes down like that and he doesn't move, then he's gonna charge, but sometimes he'll do that and he'll move left and right. But of strafey, no sir, not this time. Okay, full health, back to AMG. Now, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? There we go. We can hit him before he does that. Charge. 
On guard. Yeah, definitely should have blocked after that. Ah, block straight away. He has an insane reach with that. So we can heal ourselves up again. Now he's getting very agile. Luckily he did that when he was far away from me. A little dodgy there. Come on, Jack. What are you doing? You can stomp him there, and that takes off a large amount of damage, especially if you're by his head. That time I was not. Even on normal mode, this place is scattered with many kits, or should I say, health bottles. First aid. Okay, back of the spirit. Again, take your time, no rush at all. Which is why the challenges are going to be fairly interesting if I ever get to this point for the Extreme Plus challenges. Alright, Jack, what are you going to do? There we go. Run away from his attack, his grapple attack. And block and block again. Alright, he's got to be on his last legs now. You know he's close to the end when his attacks become more relentless and erratic. So get ready on that block all the time and wait to see what he does. So that time I was spamming hit, but for some reason it just doesn't hit. That was an insanely good duck there, Jack. Duck if you love life, that was a trophy for ducking his. Or just defeating him, I think, in the normal game. I was lucky that he didn't do his grapple there, he would have gotten me. And now just block because he's going to jump at you and then stop him. There we go. Come on Jack, time for you to go down. Go run away! Yeah, that takes a long time for him to do that launch attack. You can easily get an attack in and even dodge him. There we go, Suri. You are down. Okay, so we're going to rip his head off and we're going to continue on the next one. So normally you would do a quick walk around, but there is definitely nothing to collect. So we're just going to head on out. Alright, so this one I would definitely recommend doing it stealthfully, not like I do it here. I messed this up. It took me such a long time with that jack battle. I just felt like I needed to hurry, but you definitely do not. It would be a shitload quicker to take him out stealthily than it would be to do this, obviously. It takes three fully charged punches. Normally, at least, because it can differ. I think if you hit them in the back of the head, they'll fall over instantly. Alright, moving on. Once again, you do a loop around to the same hut. And I'm going to let this play out and hook back up when you next have control of the character. So, after your little boat ride, 
we're going to head up here and obviously we're going to speed this up a little bit. Now this could arguably be the one of the hardest parts of the game. But luckily for you, I have a fantastic strategy for this. Don't forget your scrap metal. In our normal mode, there'll be two crawfish to your right. Okay, this is the second gator, which I decide just to kill. You can lead him out into the area behind you. But I'd say one out of four or five times, I'll make that without him getting you. But head straight down here, head to the right. And you can grab the branch. Then we're going to go and have a look in the fridge. And in the five or six or ten times I've played this, there's never been anything in here. So once you're at the fridge, head to the left and head to the upside down bath. Then along the wall and open your microwave meal. Crawfish, yum. And do not jump up here. Do not go up there because you will die. Jump onto this plate over here. Or this little board and you're good. Okay. So from here, we're going to wind our way through these crocs. And considering how many spears I had at the end, you probably could kill them. Like this guy actually noticed me and you can't get past him without him noticing you. So if you swing around just to the other, other side of this, there's a tripwire on that side as you can see. Grab your chem. Now if you move to the end over there, you will see what happens. You get a large bloated that will spawn. Now there definitely are trip wires or trip bombs, no wires, around him, which you can throw your knives at. But as before, if I can get past a level or a part of a level without using anything, then that's the way I'm going to do it. So in this case, we're going to head to the right and we're going to avoid everything. Now watch this croc because he's going to go down that little place there. Then he's going to come back towards you a little bit. And then he's going to head off to the right. So be sure you're far enough back over here. Because if he notices you, then you have to run back to the raft or the platform. Wait for him to piss off and then you can go up this ladder. Now do not keep pushing up once you're on this ladder. Stop pushing forward the second you get up or just before. Because you will die very quickly. Sneaky place to put the tripwire, but you can go around it. Now to my right hand side there is a fridge with some crawfish or a grub inside it, but there's also an alligator in that small area, so I deemed it not worthy. So what you can do now, once you've collected nothing here, is head back down to the bloated area where he was to check if there's any items, but on this mode there isn't. Okay, now comes the very, very difficult section. It's the longest section without a save. So, drop down here without him noticing you. If he notices you, start again. Destroy that tripwire. Now, he has to follow you through this gap. If he doesn't come through the gap, he will eat you. A lot of the time he will get stuck like that. So just keep your fair distance, but don't go too far, because you want him to come this way. And if he disappears underwater, then just start running, because he will be coming straight towards you. Then take out that tripwire, and that's going to be for later. Now at the top of this ladder, don't move. Once you get your hand on the top over here, stop pushing forward. You're in the perfect position for this next trap. Throw that tripwire there, and then as you can see, you're in line here. If you try and get in line again, you automatically start going down the ladder, and it can be very irritating. So just don't move when you get to the top. Okay, we're going to head in here and use the throwing knife. And then we're going to stomp him. Being careful that he doesn't not die. Because he can also set off those bombs against the wall. Okay, so we're going to grab two throwing knives here. And don't worry about those bombs, they can't be activated by touching them. Okay, so we've got another throwing knife here and another one over here. So now, we're going to put a little tricky one with this guy as well. 
We're going to get him to follow us. Get him to come right to the end. He needs to be almost past this pole. Yep. Then head on down and up the ladder. And you've managed to grab two more throwing knives without using any, which is always a bonus. Now normally I'd have to go, if you wanted to save a throwing knife, you could not destroy that second trip mine and do what I did at the start of this level and lure that croc away to save yourself one more. But because I had so many at the end, I decided not to do it. Okay, here we go. First we're going to grab the grub. Then we're going to blow up this barrel and you can't kill any croc using it. Trust me, I've tried. There's a tripwire right here, so wait for this croc to move away. Prehistoric beast. Then you're going to have line of sight for this tripwire. Take that out. Then wait for the croc to pass again. There is one just over there on the right. And there are some items down there, but we're going to get that in a couple of seconds because something strange happens with that croc. Okay, so once he's gone, it would be better if he notices you here, so he follows you, which is what I was trying to do. Because he will definitely snap you while you're even on this ladder. As you can see there, he was pretty close. Alright, two more throwing knives and a lovely grub. I'm going to speed this up for waiting for him to move past. There he goes. Jump down and up the stairs we go. Okay, so we're going to head to the door, and behind said door is going to be a couple molded, three molded in total. That was a strange spawn point for him. They normally spawn on the right hand side of the room, and every punch you can hit them both. But not this time. There we go. In here, you're going to find a cassette tape. I didn't realize there's a picture of the bobblehead on my left hand side there. Okay. The worst thing you can do really in any situation is to underestimate your enemy. Treat every enemy as if they're the most powerful one that you're meeting. Okay, so once you step through this doorway, the fatty will spawn. And it also changes something in the area that you just passed. So you can grab your grab, then we're going to head back. Because the croc has moved slightly further back. It's further under that jetty now, or the house, over there. Whereas before he was right in front. And this allows you to grab your grab. And the throwing knife. And there's two more over there, which you have to get from the other side. So we're going to head back up the stairs, and I do speed this up when I get to the top. My cat is just demanding so much attention. I've got one hand down the side of my chair, constantly playing with her little phoenix. Okay, yeah, there's the bobblehead picture. Okay, so now we're back here. Now shit gets real. Now, like I always say before, even if I do mess it up and manage to do it, I like to keep it on to show you your margin for error. So this one, I would wait a couple more steps for him to get closer to that bomb because he wasn't close enough for my liking. The next one you want to shoot is this one. Now this uh, little gate here that I'm hiding behind isn't foolproof. Sometimes he'll hit you. You've got to make sure you get him before he gets past that because he will block the access or the throwing line of sight for that um, tripwire or that bomb. See now that wasn't ideal to say the least. I'm lucky to be alive because the croc wasn't walking past there. See now I should block this and then able to throw this but something goes wrong again. As you can see he's in the way. But we're going to head on up. Luckily that uh, acid doesn't do a ton of damage. 
lucky to even get that one. And again, I was lucky not to die by that mine. And I was lucky not to get destroyed by that mine after using that power punch because that will also set off the bombs. Okay, to the right we have a pad over there. A neuro pad, we're going to call them. Let's have a little munch. Now there's a four-legged fuckstick in this end box and I came up with a fantastic way to kill him without any danger to yourself. So head over here and get him to spawn, which is easy enough. Then turn around and we're going to head to a line of sight because there is a tripwire across there and if you walk in front of the doorway he will run towards you and set off the tripwire and kill you because you have to be close enough to that wire in order to see him. Okay, so you're going to wait for that crop to float away and we're going to head fairly far back and you want to aim just above the bomb because it will go a little bit down and there we go, the four-legged's gone. Right, now we're going to do our sweep of the area to collect all the items. The first one is the champion effigy and this is because the croc came past me as I did this. This should be okay. Do not go into this corner. There is nothing here. Instead, head straight for this area here and you will find the two throwing knives. Score, score. Then in this corner we're going to have some grubs or a grub. Then we're going to head to the exit because there is no one standing in our way now. Now there's a nice little trick I like to do and that is to go through the exit and save and then come back into this area to collect a couple more items which are going to be invaluable really. Now they are down here but you have to look at the movements of the crocs to be sure you don't get eaten. So from this point I like to head to the gate Click the grub. See, there he is there. I was thinking, okay, should I just go? But I've got 40-something cassette tapes, so might as well use them. Got a whole lot of ammo and spears here. Or scrap metal and spears. Effigy and some more spears. And some cassette tapes and throwing knives. Thanks, skipping PS4. Christ. Okay, save your game, and then we're going to head back into the area to grab some last items. A couple of throwing knives and some grub. Or a grub. See, he is patrolling, but he is moving away from me. The grub in here, and then there's some throwing knives under the house. Now be very sure that a croc doesn't follow you in here because you're pretty much screwed if he does. Those guys are dead, fortunately. Now there will be one patrolling as you can see there. So just be careful, you don't want to mess this up, although you have saved. Alright, so we're going to speed this up, we're going to run to the exit and head to the cemetery. Okay, so on this mode, there's a whole lot of these crates and a whole lot of branches over here as well as some grubs. Be sure you've got them all. And be sure to leave the boxes with a single tape on them. As you can see, this one has two rows. These not explosive. The ones that only have one string of tape around them is going to be an explosive. So there's three here that you can open. Then there's one explosive behind those two boxes, so be careful. Now again, having so many of these cassette tapes, I did all of this and then obviously combined some stuff to make space. And then I went back and saved again, so I didn't have to go through this all the time, but you probably will have to, because this part is pretty damn difficult. So land a fully charged shot on his face, that's vital. 
then all you want to be wary about is this four-legged fuckstick because he will, as usual, kill you so quickly. So the second you lose sight of him, be worried. See, I heard him there, but I don't there he is there. Just lucky to get away from that. They are so quick. See, where is he? Here he comes. I should be running at me and I should be able to get him. There we go. Now whatever you do, don't go too close to the exit, which is to my right. Because the, uh, the big fat molded will spawn. He's down. That was close. Still alive, and they get up so quickly. Okay, he's down. So we're going to heal myself. Because we've got an abundance of stuff which we haven't used yet. So I think in this area, if you follow the guide closely and collected what I've collected, you should be able to have at least two bombs. But I don't like using them on these enemies, so I just used one. And thinking about it now, I would probably use some spears from afar. Because obviously getting close to these guys is dangerous. So at the start you can land a solid three punch on both of them. Now stand closer to this mausoleum over here, then the spit won't hit you. Well, in theory. When they go down on one knee like that, you're able to do a double charge punch. If you do a third one, they will start spitting at you. See, that was unfortunate that I got hit by that because I was completely around the corner. So we're going to use a health kit. Or a medikit. Or a first aid. Damn it, why do I keep forgetting that? Okay, so try and keep this thing in front of you and also try and keep them together. If they split up, then it's not going to be good. That was very dangerous, running into the open like that, but I managed to get away from it. See, that was unfortunate as well. Just a second too late. You can see he starts rubbing his chest and then he'll start spitting straight away. But one of them is down. There we go, one left. Probably also help if you duck behind there in the early stages. Yes, for skipping there, apologies. I am currently in the process of getting my external recording device back. And once that happens, my recording will be a shitload quicker. Again, normally I would just restart, but I had so much health, I thought, fuck it, let me just try. Because it was a silly way that I got injured there. Exposing myself. Alright, that is the cemetery done. So we're going to munch on a grub and we're going to head out. Now there is a grub there in normal mode, which is why sometimes I look in these places where there's nothing. There's also an effigy. Right over here on the right hand side on that lamppost on normal mode. And there has never been anything inside this church. So off we go for our coffin ride. Okay, so after we emerge from the coffin, you won't be able to save because you don't have any items. That's funny. The one thing that Jack leaves in your inventory is probably the one thing that can cure him. How ironic. Okay, this I found quite difficult because, as you will notice, you run past these guys as per normal and you would run straight for the gauntlet, but not without this throwing knife because you will run into a fat dead end. There's also a health right there. Throw it through the bushes on the right so he leaves a gap on his left or his right at least to go through. What the hell is this? Speed this up. Ready for use. Ready for use. Here we go. Charge. 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 
Didn't realize there was a challenge for this as well. But again, I'm not focusing on any challenges, just on getting through this level so you can unlock the challenges. Now, there was a four-legged guy behind me, which is never a good thing. This is somewhere I would also consider using a bomb in that little alleyway. But the bomb is just so needed for Jack's last fight, which is coming up very soon. Okay, so now for the four-legged buck stick, I like to find some cover, some high cover. And it looks like he probably died, so I sped this up a little bit. Get him to get close enough so you can lunge at him. Here we go. Yep, he's down. So I feel with the dual wield AMGs it's going to be an easy challenge. Although it does tick down twice as fast I think when you have both attached and equipped. Okay, so we're going to go to Margaret's house. Well, where you fought her. To the right hand side you're going to find a save point and some cassette tapes. As well as this interesting little clay dish. So we bake a fourth grade. Family doesn't look like that anymore. Right, so there's a claw molded that f that spawns in here, and you can unspawn him Charge. if you run past those doors you just went through. Charge. He will dissolve, which you will see here. I unintentionally Charge. did. I want him to follow me, but Charge. he disappeared. Charge. Now he does come back, but not in this room. Charge. He'll be behind this door, and you can win the next couple of battles with a cunning use of doors. Which is a take from Eddie Izzard's The Cunning Use of Flag stand-up comedy. Charging. He's hilarious. Okay, so open the door. I just wanted to see at the start if I could hit him through the door. This is not the case. Charging. Open, smack, close. Charging. Okay, it looks like he's down. Now we need this guy to spit at me. And I would go about now. I waited too long each time. As you can see, he's already stopped. Now you can definitely hit him again while he's a bit stunned on one knee. Here comes the vomit. The vomit. I wanted to say acid and vomit, so I said vomit. Okay, that was the terrible timing there. As you can see, I walked straight into it. Doesn't do a lot of damage. Grab your throwing knife, and there's going to be a couple more molded in the next room. Hello. Charge it up fully each time. There we go. I can't remember if this is the one that had the barrels in the next room. I think it is. What you want to do again is focus solely on the four legged guy because. He will kill you so quickly, like I've said tons of times before. I've only got two throwing knives now, so got to be careful. Unlike the normal mode, no one comes out of that fireplace just yet. But you want to move around just so you can see the next barrel. Not that one, but this one. And wait for him, wait for him. There he is. Then you can head back. Take out the fist and do the door thing. I wouldn't recommend using that throwing knife on that barrel. Although that being said, it's only the tent area next with Jack Battle. So sure, use your throwing knife. Even use a spear if you've got it. That's if you don't want to use that against Jack at the end. The spears are difficult because he dodges them very quickly. Okay, so the final guy before the Jack fight is this guy. Charge up, run straight to it. You hit him twice and he's down. Oh, should I say three times? Charging. Champion Effigy, thank you very much. Nothing to the left and right in any of the game modes that I've seen. 
just an effigy on the wall here, or should I say fence, and we're off to Jack's fight. So now hopefully you will have as much health and ammo and items as I do, and you could probably definitely use a couple more in those difficult times, because by the end of this battle you'll see what I actually had left over. Lots of grubs. Nice chem there. I would use the chem on either the bomb or the health, depending on how many you have of each. I like to have two bombs against Jack. And I think that's what I've got. Yeah, two bombs, and I've got two first aids and 13 grubs, give or take. 10 grubs. I can't see on this little small screen when I'm doing the commentary. And three shots of the shotgun. Now, after doing this fight, I would probably recommend only using the shotgun when he's stunned because changing weapons uh, mid-battle can be quite daunting as you'll see in this fight. I don't actually know if it's this one where I don't use it, but I definitely use the bombs. But the spears and the shotgun, yeah, I'd say spears no, shotgun if you can. Hi Jack. Okay, so this is an 8 minute battle. I like to start it off by running to the side because he'll just do a straight attack every time, pretty much. So strategies are like before. Wait for your chance to hit. So as you can see there, he does two left and right attacks and then a forward lunge. That is one of his moves and he can duck both of those first attacks and he can interrupt the third one. That is a straightforward lunge, which you can duck, and then a straightforward lunge, which you can't duck. So these are the moves that you'll get to know. Not sure why I stood up there. Yeah, but these are the moves that you'll get to know, and it's just, again, trial and error. The more you fight him, the better you get. But it is, I love it, it's quite intense the way he just stands there and stares at you. Because he wants you to go for him, but the ideal opportunity is after he's attacked. Sorry about that again, just skipped a couple of seconds, it's so irritating, you have no idea how much that pisses me off, but not even the Sony support can help me with that. They even said to stop going to XMB mid-game, and I've stopped doing that as well. Okay, so I like to do a charge punch there, and then run and stomp him if you can. Or if you want to, you can get three charged punches in him, on him at least. Okay, so he's gone down once. After this point, I like to throw everything I've got at him. So once you've set the bomb... See, that was incorrectly done. You have to set that bomb and then charge up your fist. Then detonate the bomb and again you can hit him two or three times with charged attacks. So that was a bit of a mess up. Now again, he can also do his grapple headbutt, which is terrible. See, this is the correct way to do it. Charge it up, and it's unfortunate that he did that come here matrix thing, because he's wide open when he does that. Now the bomb I did before stuns him. This time it won't stun him, because he's too low on health. Which I figured out the hard way, because he ducked my punch. Cheeky puff at her. Okay, so you can duck his left and right, and just watch him now, because his arms go in the air then you know he's going to do the grapple lunge, the grapple headbutt, and that is just terrible. Okay, so here I messed this up. I wanted to select the shotgun. As you can see, it is selected on the thing, and only selected it afterwards, so that was a bit of a mess up. And there is his orangutan attack, which I like to call. And it's unlucky that he did his combo when I wasn't facing him, because you can't block dick when you're facing your back to him. I was so adamant on using the shotgun, it just threw me off, it threw me off my ride here. You see, I get hit by all three of those when I could have just ducked them. Which is why I strongly recommend, if you feel comfortable using the shotgun, I would use it, but he'd probably be dead now if I haven't pulled the shotgun out. Just ruined my rhythm, really. But in the end, he's going to go down anyway.
you see again, I was still shaken up by that whole ordeal. I just didn't duck. It's very easy to duck like that. And as you can see, while you're ducking those shots, you can get right up close to him and hit him in the face. Oh no, run away. See, once again, that definitely, definitely would have killed me if he had grappled me. But because I turned and ran, he hit my back. So yeah, valuable, invaluable information that is. Alright, ducky duck, and we're going to hit him again. For some reason I wasn't standing up. I think at this point my heart was beating at 150 times a minute. A little skip there again. All I can do is apologize and say it's not going to happen again. But it probably will. Okay, so we're definitely near the end here. He's going to go down very soon. Could be on this one. Let's see. Just insta block after hitting him every time now. He's got to be close. Eat the grubs because you got him. Eat him if you got him. There we go, sir. Nope, not yet. He just got need. It's about time he does his orangutan attack, but he is finished. Ladies and gentlemen, he is down. And this will net you the King of the Swamp trophy, which I already have. This being my second playthrough. Toodles, Jack. Alright guys, that is going to bring us to the end of this tutorial. I really hope you found it detailed and informative and you're able to smash out this trophy. And if you have any questions, please ask. I'm always going to answer every question. There are plenty more guides on the way on Zoe Must Die. So I want to say thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Wake up, Zoe. Joe, what happened to her? Are you okay? I'm fine. Don't you worry about me. It's all over now. Go, 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 go! Don't move! Get your hands up! Get down! Oh Weapons down! <laughs>